Welcome back! This video deals with angular and rotational drags. They were used in the second and third phase of the puzzle cube I introduced in the video on spline drags. So this video is practically a sequel. Additionally, I am going to show you the subtypes of the comp drag, which implement what happens when the drag mesh is released. But before we start, let's have a short overview on the drag tutorials as we planned them, so you can find which video provides you the info you need. The drag state component was designed with the aim to consolidate as many features as possible. This makes the component one of the most difficult to present in a single video. So we decided to create this mini-series of videos, each one dealing with a selected number of aspects of the drag component. Have a look at this overview if you want to know about a specific aspect. Before we get started, let's have a look at the difference between angular and rotational drags. The typical use case for rotational drags is a valve or screw. The movable mesh and all attached meshes are rotated around a chosen axis of the pivot of the mesh, like in the picture on the left. And the uh, attached point, which I marked with a red cross, must be placed in at the center of the rotation, so the mesh can take the rotation from the motion controller. Therefore, be careful when implementing rotational drags in desktop or mobile environments, because you cannot do that with a mouse or a touchscreen. The typical use case of the angular drag, in contrast, is a lever. Here, the mesh moves along an angle in the plane perpendicular to the axis uh, you specified in the settings, as shown in the right picture. The attached point in consequent must be on the opposite side of the mesh as the center of the rotation. Let's start with the rotational drag, which I use for the puzzle cube. As you can see, I want to rotate two wheels as well as the hand relative to the face of the clock. This is why I attach the static mesh as big wheel and hand to the static mesh of the small wheel and equip the latter with the tag SM wheel small, which I refer to as component tag to control in the drag component here. As you can see here on the drag component, I prepared the section set already with sections for each time from 12 to 11 o'clock. And I only equipped the 5 o'clock section with the name right and the set boolean set to true. I also included the code I used in the video on spline drags to set everything up just as I described there. So you can see everything is prepared. I just need to choose the drag type. As you can see, the drag component provides you with three rotational drag types, each covering one spatial di direction as rotational axis. The rotational axis are taken from the pivot of the mesh you've referred to in the component to control tag. Consequently, to set up a rotational drag successfully, you need to make sure that the pivot of your mesh is placed exactly where you want the rotation to happen and you want your attach point, if you use one, to be very close to the center of the rotation. In our case, this is a rotation in the middle of the wheel around its set axis, so we choose rotation yaw in the drag component. Now we are ready to try our rotational drag. And you can see, as soon as in I initiate the latch, the drag component applies the rotation from the motion controller to the controlled mesh and all its attached meshes, and lets us point the hand on any time from within 12 o'clock and 11 o'clock. So what changes if we want to do an angular drag instead? Well, first of all, now everything follows the hand, not the small wheel. So all meshes we want to be uh, affected by the drag have to be attached to the hand. And also our attach point on the hand mesh must be here at the opposite side compared to the center of rotation, which is here. 
I also included a scene component here to make sure I could do the angular drag perpendicular to the set axis, which corresponds to the angular yaw drag type, which I entered here. Apart from that, we can use exactly the same section set and other settings, with the only exception of putting the tag of the scene component in the component tag to control setting of the drag component here. As you can see now, instead of latching on the, to the wheel, the motion controller latches onto the hand and moves it along an arc instead of rotating it. And when I let go of the hand, it automatically moves to the nearest section, did you see? Let me just change the section set a bit to make that more clear. Now we just have five sections at 0 degree, 90 degree, 180 degree, 270 degree and 360 degree. It's quite obvious now. If I go to approximately 4 o'clock, it goes to 3 upon release. And if I go further to 5 o'clock, it goes to 6 upon release. This does not come by itself. It's implemented in the snap type setting of the drag component. Want to have a closer look? The snap type is the second element in the drag type map, and it provides you with this choice of three settings, reset, snap to segment, and free movement. Let's create three instances of our angular drag puzzle and see all three of them side by side. By side. Here we are. Each instance of the puzzle is equipped with a snap type according to the label. And to make things even clearer, we can also adjust the snapping speed here. Let's put a low value like 1, so we have more time to observe the snap. The reset snap type is supposed to reset the draggable mesh to the start position determined in the drag component upon release. This will take a while, so let's try the other two settings. Snap to segment is the setting I showed you before, but now you can observe a bit better how the draggable mesh is moved to the closest section upon release. The free movement snap type practically just leaves the mesh to its own devices upon release. If you moved it rapidly, it will retain a bit of the momentum, but basically the mesh stays where it's left. Ah, finally the reset snap is done. By the way, for the particle effect, I just hooked up the code with the snapping complete event dispatcher of the drag component. It's a convenient way to set up a timer, don't you think? By now, you should be up to speed regarding angular and rotational drags. So I'll sign off. See you soon. Bye bye.